Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Adrian.exe. Welcome to Content Analysis 4, where we take different pop culture topics and analyze them. In this episode, we are going to cover the philosophy of Solid Snake and Big Boss from the Metal Gear series, as well as what influenced their philosophical point of views. The Metal Gear series is the pinnacle of not only storytelling, but the artistic expression in video games. With respect to gaming, there has not been a series so daring, thought-provoking, and profound when it comes from everything from its characters to overall themes, to even gameplay mechanics. The sheer amount of detail that goes into constructing its characters is amazing. This is especially apparent when talking about the chief protagonist, Solid Snake, and the antagonist through most of the canon timeline, Big Boss himself. Before we get into their individual philosophy, let's get into a little of their backstory. This isn't meant to be comprehensive, this is more like a quick rundown as to the history of these characters. Starting with Solid Snake, we see that he began his early career as a Green Beret, as a teenager, and took part in the Gulf War, where he joined Big Boss's Special Forces unit, Foxhound. It is here that he donned the name Solid Snake, was taught CQC, introduced to Master Miller, and was taught the will to survive by Big Boss himself. Snake would go on his first mission in 1995 to save Grey Fox gather information on and defeat Metal Gear, as well as Venom Snake, posed as Big Boss. This mission was dubbed Intrude N313. Snake made his official return in 1999 in the mission termed Operation Intrude F014, also known as the Zinnabar Land Disturbance, where he successfully acquired the oils formula, defeated Big Boss, and destroyed yet another Metal Gear. By this time, Snake was dealing heavily with his PTSD and guilt of killing his father. Regardless of his psychological ailments, he returned in 2005 to Shadow Moses Island, later deemed the Shadow Moses Incident, to ascertain information on the Rogue Foxhound Group's nuclear capabilities, save weapons manufacturer Kenneth Baker, and the DARPA chief Donald Anderson, aka Signet. He was successful only in defeating Metal Gear once again, as well as defeating the rogue Foxhound members that included Liquid Snake. After Shadow Moses, Otacon and Solid Snake founded the Anti-Metal Gear Corporation Philanthropy to rid the world of Metal Gear technology and prevent global warfare. It was in 2007 that Snake began suffering from accelerated aging, entered the tanker mission, or the Manhattan Incident in which Snake gathered photographic evidence of Metal Gear's completed development. During his mission, Liquid living through Ocelot's arm sinks the tanker using Semtex. Snake escapes and fakes his own death, only to return in 2009 at the Big Shell offshore facility. Enter the plant mission. Snake teams up with Raiden to face off against Solidus and Galukovic's militia. Raiden and Snake stop Arsenal Gear's AIGW, defeat Solidus, and gain a false lead as to the true identities of the Patriots. Snake returns in 2014 as Old Snake, a term ascribed to him due to his Warner Syndrome-like symptoms getting worse, gradually, to face off against Liquid in the Middle East. Meanwhile, Liquid, with countless PMCs, is getting closer to world domination. Snake faces Liquid once at Shadow Moses and the last time on the Arsenal Gear class warship. He also permanently destroys the Patriots AI. He later meets with Big Boss, who reveals to him the history of the Patriots and that he is no longer a biological weapon and dies from the box dye virus present in Snake that was used to target him specifically. A quick background on the Big Boss himself. Born in 1935, Jack, Snake, later known as Big Boss, joined an apprenticeship with the Boss in 1950 during the Korean War. They went their separate ways later in 1959. Similar to Solid Snake, Big Boss joined the Green Berets in 1964 before Operation Snake Eater, and later the CIA, during Operation Snake Eater and the Virtuous Mission. During the Snake Eater mission, Snake was tasked with eliminating the boss, destroying the Shagohad, recovering Sokolov, a defecting Soviet scientist, and destroying the remaining nuclear warhead. He was able to destroy the Shagohad, destroy the remaining nuclear warhead, and eliminate the boss. The last event having the greatest effect on him psychologically and with respect to the development of his philosophy. Before their duel, the boss stated, There is nothing more for me to give you. All that's left for you to take is my life by your own hand. One must die and one must live. No victory, no defeat. The survivor will carry on the fight. It is our destiny. The one who survives will inherit the title of boss. And the one who inherits the title of boss will face an existence of endless battle. The boss's final words will go to shape the rest of Metal Gear's history. Fast forward to 1970, Big Boss is captured by the Fox unit. 
the leader of the rogue Fox Unit revolt. Jean is forced to launch a missile towards the US, but is stopped and killed by Big Boss. Later that same year, Big Boss helps form the Patriots, which was comprised of Signet, Paramedic, Ocelot, Eva, and himself. He simultaneously forms Foxhound during this time. The Patriots' mission at the time was unity of thought and awareness, in honor of their interpretation of the boss's final wish, or final will. As Zero's power grew, Big Boss came to resent him and felt as though he was being used as a puppet. Big Boss left the group, the US, and Foxhound after he found out about the less Infants Terribles project. Following over 70 missions with different military groups, meeting Miller or Master Miller and establishing MSF, he played a role in the Peace Walker incident in 1974. Big Boss destroys Peace Walker, denounces the boss, removes his bandana, and commissions the development of Metal Gear Ziki, which was later destroyed due to being hijacked by Paz. In 1975, Big Boss rescues Paz and Chico in an occurrence labeled the Ground Zeroes incident. Skullface's forces XOF pursue Big Boss's chopper on their way from the mother base. Explosives in Paz explode causing injuries and the chopper to crash and sending Big Boss into a nine year coma. In 1984, Big Boss awoke from his coma before Venom Snake and agreed to allow him to pose as his doppelganger. During the Phantom Pain incident, Big Boss helps Venom Snake escape the hospital after he wakes up, changes his identity, then heads for the US to form the large mercenary group Outer Heaven. In the 1990s, Big Boss returned to command Foxhound while forming Outer Heaven. Fast forward after Big Boss's defeat at Zanzibar Land, his injured body was recovered by the Patriots. He was then injected with nano machines, placed into a coma, and had his body rebuilt. This all happened sometime during the events of MGS1 and MGS2. After the Fox Alive virus had been uploaded, Big Boss wakes up, finds Zero, and meets Old Snake at his fake gravesite. Now that we have covered their backgrounds, there are many parallels between Solid Snake and Naked Snake that can be explored. The differences between the two are how each reacted to the major events that transpired in their individual lives. While Big Boss's losses resulted in an intensified desire for a perpetual cycle of war that gave he and his fellow soldiers purpose, Solid Snake fought with philanthropy for the purpose of creating a world where soldiers are no longer needed in battle. Parallels can immediately be drawn from Operation Snake Eater and Operations Intrude N313, where Naked Snake kills the boss and Solid Snake kills Venom Snake, Big Boss's doppelganger, respectively. After the boss's death, Naked Snake becomes disillusioned with his country and the notion of patriotism, causing him to ultimately form Outer Heaven. This is despite the boss's wish for peace and unity. This could be because the boss's message to Naked Snake was unclear or misinterpreted. Solid Snake on the other hand feels guilt and has nightmares due to killing what he thought was his father. He unlike his father seeks closure. He does this by returning to the battlefield. But let us look at what happens to both characters directly after the two missions occurred. Big Boss retires and re-enters the war life when he fights during the Mozambican War of Independence. Solid Snake, however, is shown to struggle before he reluctantly participates in the Zanzibar land disturbance, partially to end the nightmares he had of Big Boss and Outer Heaven. Zanzibar land and Peace Walker is where both Big Boss and Solid Snake reject their mentor's ideologies. Solid Snake rejects Big Boss by saying, I'm not like you. I love life. Big Boss states when referring to the boss, She betrayed me, cuz. She what? In the end, she put down her gun. And when she did, she rejected her entire life up to that point, including me. It's clear from Big Boss's story that he favors war, opposes the corrupt governmental entities, has no particular ideology, and is a consequentialist. Big Boss adheres to deontology up until he kills the boss. Deontology is a set of ethical theories that states that people should adhere to their obligations and duties when engaged in decision making, when ethics are in play. His adherence is apparent when he follows through with the order to kill the boss, regardless of the pain that it will cause him. However, his cognitive dissonance, or the feeling of discomfort that results when your beliefs run counter to new information that is presented to you, begin to contribute to the distrust he feels towards the US government that forced him to kill the boss. After the boss's death, Big Boss adheres to a form of theological ethics, which states that if the end result of our actions results in a positive effect on society, then our actions are deemed good. The particular form is egoism, in which actions are carried out through our own self-interest, which would explain why Big Boss is willing to sacrifice the lives 
of others to accomplish his own goals. Contrastly, Snake adheres to utilitarianism, a form of the consequentialist theory, where bringing the most happiness to the most amount of people is the objective. Snake almost always risks his life to ensure everyone will have a future. He kept to his principles even after being demonized by the Patriots following the tanker incident. Snake was willing to go through an oven causing him an immense amount of pain just to ensure that people will no longer be affected negatively by the actions of Liquid Ocelot and the Patriots. The main differences between Big Boss and Solid Snake is their views on war, responses to traumatic events, their purpose in fighting, and their ability to cope with traumatic events. Both suffer moral injuries. However, Snake remains steadfast to his beliefs while Big Boss does not. Research has found that younger soldiers are not fully developed cognitively process moral ambiguity. It could be that due to Solid Snake's accelerated aging, that he was more prepared for war than Big Boss was, or perhaps due to his personality. Solid Snake's participation in countless battles, but distaste of the glorification of violence, is a testament to his view that war is necessary at times to create change in order to enable a society that recognizes its past and preserves its future, as expressed in the end of MGS2. This can be seen during the battle with Raven, in which he states, This isn't glorious, it's just plain killing. Violence isn't a sport. And when he tells Raiden, There's no right part in murder, not ever. Solid Snake only does what is necessary to win, but isn't willing to go the same lengths as Big Boss. Big Boss sees war as inevitable, profitable, and can be made to be perpetual, which allows him to believe that an autonomous military state is viable. He sees how often battles happen at a global scale, and how often his expertise is needed on the battlefield, further confirming that the violence won't ever truly stop, and that he can continue to thrive off that environment freely with creations like MSF and Outer Heaven. His use of any abducted able-bodied soldier and disregard for the safety of others exemplifies his need to carry out his version of the boss's will by any means necessary. Solid Snake responds to killing his father by neither avoiding the topic nor repressing it, which leaves him at a healthy coping space. Big Boss never seemed to be able to recover from the loss of the boss. This is evidenced by his grieving in the mammal pod, and when stating to Snake, but since the day I killed the boss with my own hands, I was already dead. Solid Snake fights for a better tomorrow, a world free from the oppression of the Patriots, nuclear warfare, and where individuality is allowed to exist. Big Boss fights to create a world where soldiers are not tools of the government and are allowed to live a purposeful life as soldiers. Big Boss essentially becomes a warlord because he sees comfort in war, thrives from it, and feels a sense of unity during times of war. In trying to create this world, he inadvertently adopted the view of the Patriots, and only viewed soldiers as tools and machines to be discarded after their usefulness has been expended. It is not until the very end of Big Boss's life that he changes his interpretation of what the boss meant, meaning her will was to leave the world as it is in peace. In conclusion, what influenced the differences in their philosophy was their ability to cope with loss their ability to form their own purpose and acceptance of who they are as people. Additionally, I believe that both subscribe to a form of consequentialism when it comes to ethics, with Solid Snake being more of a utilitarian, while Big Boss being more of an egoist. Thanks for watching the fourth episode of Content Analysis. If you liked the video and want to see more, feel free to like and subscribe for more content. Also feel free to comment in the comment section below and let me know what you believe Snake's philosophy was.